I'm Russ Kickle, and on today's episode of American Reef, we're going to check out Kevin's filtration room. So for those of you who don't remember Kevin, um, he's the dude who basically had that beautiful uh, SPS dominated tank. We did a tank tour a few videos back. Uh, he's also the guy uh, who was fortunate enough actually to purchase a reef store that was going out of business. Um, and uh, I think it's called Reef Gallery. And uh, I think Mike had described it as Kevin wants to make this a destination kind of shop. Uh, he's Again, just months into owning this store. So it's one of those things where I'm sure he's, that's an evolving kind of process. So if you're in the neighborhood, you want to check it out. Again, it's Reef Gallery. And give them a call first. Make sure they're there because I know they have limited hours, etc. And again, make sure that they have what you're looking for. Um, now with Kevin, again, who is a hobbyist and has been a hobbyist forever. Um, what's cool about his filtration room is when you see it, what jumps out at you is he's got two additional beautiful large reef display tanks that are all plumbed into the same kind of life support systems. So one small sump is basically driving three large reef tanks, right? And in this one small sump, it's a relatively small skimmer like this ASM skimmer that actually is providing, you know, the, the main skimming for all three of those systems which is different than we're kind of used to. Like with Mike's system, he's got them all dumping into that large sump and he's got two large skimmers in there, right? So, you know, it's, it's really kind of cool looking how Kevin has done this. And he's got this thing tuned in to the, to the point where he actually is turning off his GFO and carbon reactors because phosphates are so low. Um, when we were filming this, he was actually going to take the macroalgaes out in the refugium area, again, because his phosphates are low. Um, and, and when you look at it, those, those are problems that we all wish we kind of had because our phosphates are usually way too high. So again, I think with this system, you'll look at it and it's a very simple approach, but very, very effective. Um, you know, within the filtration, if you're a new hobbyist, um, keep an eye out for the fact that, you know, not only with these large display tanks, um, is he increasing water volume, right, to help there, but he's got a ton of live rock in here as well. Um, again, and when you look at it, that also provides a great foundation for, you know, that life support system with a filtration. Um, but he does it in a way that he's still got lots of character in the systems, um, but yet, again, spread out through all these tanks. And so, again, it makes a good case for why we want to get more tanks with more rocks in it. Um, again, if you're new to the hobby and you're looking for other resources, check out on YouTube, uh, basically the Premium Aquatics YouTube channel, as well as the Bulk Reef Supply YouTube channel. On the Premium Aquatics, under the new tank series, they've got one video that says, what is the best rock, right? Um, which is just awesome, again, if, for new hobbyists especially, right? kind of get you right to, to the point. And then if you want to invest some more time, you can check out the Bulk Reef Supplies channel where they've got probably five, six videos that they'll go over like rockscaping as well as some of the kind of products that they have in inventory and kind of tell you the differentiations between them two. And again, they just do a little bit deeper dive into that. So again, two really great resources there. Um, you know, while I'm doing this introduction, one of the things that I did realize th is that uh, one of the things that I forgot to cover um, in this video was how calcium, alkalinity, and ma magnesium are maintained. Um, and so, again, it's not covered in the video, but I'll kind of just jump to that right now. Um, ultimately, Kevin does a lot of testing, right? And so he knows his daily demand for all three of those. And based on that, what he is doing, he is using Bulk Reef Supply, uh, their bulk products, to basically dose through a dosing pump. So it's the, the combination of the two which allow him to kind of meet the daily demands of everything that's needed in that system. You know, other than that, I've tried to show everything else that we have 
on the systems as far as lighting to kind of the way the water flows, etc. And uh, again, I think you'll find this video pretty valuable for again, not only the new hobbies, but the experienced hobby as well. So to that point, let's check out Kevin's filtration room and his three beautiful tanks. So this is the 400 gallons. So now we're looking yeah, at the rest stuff. of the 400, the <laughs> other 280 gallons of LPS tank, Zoa tank, sump, with a very simple small skimmer, which shows you don't need to have a gigantic right. skimmer to run a tank, as long as you also aren't running 5,000 pounds of fish in here. I mean, there's a nice quantity of fish. They're not huge predatory fish. They're not giant wasteful tanks like I and Sanjay have. Right. They're nice, beautiful, docile fish for the most part. You saw flame wrasses upstairs possibly, they hit the whole time. There's a beautiful male rhomboids in here. Nice, simple fish that you don't need to feed a ton. He feeds six times a day, and as we talked about in the last video, feeding small amounts often keeps nutrients under control and also is a lot more healthful for the fish. So if I can stress anything else from this video, go to trying to feed your fish as often as you can in small amounts, and I think you will see much more beneficial effect than pretty much anything else we've talked about for a long time. Sure. Well, you know, the other thing that's a little bit deceptive, too, is you have a lot of rock in that 400 gallon, but you have a little here, a little, little there, a little, little there. I mean, it's a nice distribution, yeah. so you have beautiful landscaping without the wall rock. Exactly. But, yeah, a lot, right? Yeah, but the, the tanks, for the most part, are fairly open. I mean, you can see right. the spaces. Right. And you can see what takes up most of the space isn't the rock. It's the corals that have grown over, grown over the rock. So hold it, we, we're talking about again with, with again like the Raja. You said you fragged that thing, yeah. man. Dozens of times, it grows yeah. exceptionally well in here. As does basically everything in here. Right. Uh, he doesn't target feed. He distributes food throughout the tank, and even by not feeding, he's still getting amazing growth. In Heck this yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the. Uh, we know that you what the 400 gallons works. Well, same lights, same lighting pattern on that tank as well. I got I got the uh, radions on this tank as well, but they're like 55 percent instead of 85 okay. percent. They run the same schedule of lighting, uh -huh. but a lot less intensive. Okay. And again, when you look at it, when you had your issues, again with the graying out, that didn't happen this, in this, this one. Tank oh, no problem. Yeah, the LPS, it's the SPS right. that don't tolerate particularly heavy right. metals, which is, may have what have been found in there, because he ran a magnet over the black and pulled up a lot of oh, material okay. on the magnet. He ran it over Did the black the ground. magnet come out like a geopet. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. What a good idea. Oh, first of all, why would you even, why would, well, I guess when you were black, cleaning, black it just sand happened. with this tank is what I wanted. Okay. So it looks spectacular, okay. but unfortunately... So now it's bare bottom. Bare bottom, I, I would do everything bare bottom. All right. If you need sand for something, put it somewhere remote. Right. right. Or something. Somewhere you can undo it. But yeah. And and you can just get the flow that you need with bare bottom. Right. That's right. why I do bare bottom all the time. Okay, so now how long did you have the black sand in there before it went, whoa, belly up? About four or five weeks. Okay. Yeah. So it didn't happen well, overnight. I, it actually was happening before the sand, but I did the sand, I did this, I did three sure. or four different things, and sure. then you can never pinpoint exactly what it was. I did see a plume of white up in the tank upstairs mm -hmm. that was passing by, and I'm like, what is that? Mm -hmm. I went in and I looked, and I looked around to see if anything was going on, couldn't figure it out. That happened two weeks before I right. noticed this, three weeks, but I remembered it in my mind, Sure, and that could have triggered something. So it was a combination. Sure. It was a combination. Sure, sure. Well, either way, yeah. this is looking good now. It I'm looks walking good now. along with yeah, you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, that's your favorite. Right. Tell me why. Just I just like the color. Yeah. You know, you get yeah. a movement like your torches. Yes. I mean, that's why I was always into the LPS because the movement you can get with your core. Right. You know, sticks are pretty stationary. Right, exactly. So, exactly. But that's why I always liked LPS. Especially I with mean, the colors. The, move, the yeah. color and the move. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good deal. I mean, you get some nice color in SPS, but 
I think you get a lot more. I think it bangs thing. more. Yeah. On, uh, you like it. Now this one here, I just run the Kessels yes. and the Reef Brights. I put Reef Brights on all my all my tents. The right. blue that them lights have just pulled the right the best color I've ever seen right. out of coral. Right. So I put them on all my tents. Right. Which is yeah, funny because I was going to say. The, now, okay, so with that being said, with this one here, mm -hmm. um, now, like, the glitter lines aren't so important, but do you, I mean, is it one of those things where you chose, like, kind of the castles for the glitter lines, or? Hey, I don't know, because sometimes the glimmer, glimmer can get to be too much. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. you know. Um, I'm just thinking a Radeon was more powerful. Okay. You know, that I didn't, you know, these don't need sure. a lot of light. There's sure. not a lot of par in this thing. Sure. Um, I did do some checking the other day, and I got about 280 on the top. And that's 180 still a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. But I have the intensity up to 100%. The got color it. is all the way. There's no white that comes in at all. Got it. So, that's but I have the intensity up to 100%. Got they it. seem They seem to like it. They seem to <laughs> they grow well. From here, it looks they like it, right? Okay, and again, do you do the 99 with those as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there's no ramping on these. I don't have the, yeah. I got the controller for the one upstairs mm -hmm. for them for, but these are just like a timer on, <laughs> on off. On off. <laughs> and now hold it. Now, Mike, you took yours off, right? Off of the. No, yeah, everybody comes on all my time. Right no more custom. Right. And. You saw more like popping, right? As far as I like saw the, more growth in the winter time. Usually in the winter, that's all I think. I've been up for two winters, mm -hmm. and in the winter time, it was like mm -hmm. right. basically it was getting no sunlight, mm -hmm. and the castles just weren't strong enough. This winter, I was still getting growth with the radions, and now that summer's here, right. the corals are going nuts. Right. And that's even on the sunlit tank, though, which is a softy ish. For the yeah, most but part. the growth there is like is significant right. compared with past winters. Right. Got it. Okay, so back to the uh, these, these tanks here. Um, now, when you busted this up into three sections, three unique sections, right? Did you kind of have that in mind where you were going to have the middle section just kind of rock oh, yeah. filtration? And all this that? this was going to be the frag tank. Okay. For all the stuff that was growing up there, I had no place yeah. to put it. I okay. mean, you saw frag racks up there. Right. I just don't have the the space to put stuff. So right. Right. I wanted to make this the frag tank. I didn't put any fish in it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a year before I had an algae tank. Right. It was bad shape. <laughs> right. So I kind of got upset with that and kind of got this idea. And mm -hmm. this section here was always put in just the house rock because I had no limited, what, right. limited rock in my tanks. Right. I, knew I wanted to have the rock where I could. Right. So it's a sump and then here. Right. Yeah. Well, which begs the question, like, remember how on Mike's tank, how, like, the Elos tank... It wasn't yeah. live, etc. Did you go with all live to begin with, or how did that? How did you? What I did when I reset up after yep. after uh, four years being off, yep. I took my rock to somebody and threw it in the tub for two months. Okay. So I had it juiced up that right. way, and any of the rock, if any any tanks I acquire, I always try to acquire the you know, acquire the rock with it. Sure. Because I like the live. Sure. You can, you can't Different get strains live of bacteria, rock right? Correct. Right, and you don't do any dosing of bacteria, right? No, like I did start in the frag tank behind you. Okay, I dosed the the Fritz's nine hundred Turbo Star. Okay, and it went very quickly, very quickly. Okay. And I'm not having issues other than some dinos and stuff like that mm -hmm. that I'm dealing with on a new tank. Mm -hmm. But it's supporting SPS and stuff like that right now, so right. I'm happy. With right, it. It just needs a long way to go before stability, you know, and stuff like that. Time, right. Yeah, and what's the general idea of, of the tank behind? That's going to be the frag where that one was well, going to be, now, but it's not. Or? Now I'm supporting the business. Okay. So yeah, it's, that's okay. A, a new frag tank that I'm going to try to start growing. It seems to be the the industry because of Indonesia and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of big guys are right. growing them out, and they got bass areas with tanks. And one place we were in not too long ago. The swore had a thousand radions hanging off. Sure. Like, wow. That's the thing that caught me right sure. away was just the amount of radions. Yes. You know, so you know, yeah, like, it seems to be places are growing out. I'm a much smaller, but I'm, I'm planning on maybe getting rid of some stuff down here and maybe setting up a couple more tanks right. to grow right. and provide for myself right. and for the business. Right, right. You know, 
Let's, let's talk about that a little bit, right? Because mm-hmm. to me, that's one of the joys of this, knowing who owns the business, right. how it's going to work, and all that sort of stuff, right? Okay, so from your end of it, you've got this shop, right? Mm-hmm. Which, again, for now, you're just kind of in a building mode. Right. 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 Um, and so your plan is to basically take and grow a lot of what you have here exactly. and take it down to there? Yep. Yep. Is black. Right now, I'm supplying a four-foot frag tank of Okay. It's four foot by, I think it's 20 inches or something. It's 12 inches deep. Sure, sure. And, and the rest of the big tanks over there, I've ordered it. So Got it. It's, it takes a lot to fill up the store. <laughs> it takes a lot to make the, the product that you're going to sell online. It takes a lot of area. That's why these, I'm impressed with the, like, worldwide cores. Right, Supposedly right. bought two. Yes, massive. buildings yeah. or something. And mm-hmm. they're going to they're gonna be doing the same thing. Growing it right. up. So, right. And, okay, so to that point here, does, since you're going to be trying to support the business, do you got, like, um, monitors, controls, you know, all that fun stuff? Or are you winging it, or what's the general? I'm winging it right now. <laughs> okay. I, I do. Well, I, he says that, but he also tests every day, so it's I not really winging it. Right, yeah. right. I mean, he doesn't I, have a monitor. I got great employees at the store. Right. But all I do is I go over and I check. I do testing, and mm-hmm. I want to see that myself. Right. But... I, I do tests. Right. I mean, a lot. A lot of tests. Right. So the monitoring comes from left and right, right? Yeah. 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 So he's got like his long wing. And he tests <laughs> everything. Right. Adjusts small amounts off the rather than these big, massive sure. changes, which are where exactly. you get in front of the real problem. Right. Yeah. right. Well, and again, like to me, it's a loaded question. I mean, I always like people who want to do it themselves versus relying on technology because I just don't like technology. It always fails exactly. when you need it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I thought more of along the lines of me being keeping an eye on the store. Sure. It's not open every day. I mean, sure. we're closed for two or three days. Sure. And um, it's open seven hours a day. So all the other times, them tanks could be doing it. Right. Yeah. You know, sure. Coral, everything. Sure. Here, sure. you're walking around. You're, you know, you're riding. Always tank. around. You, you keep an eye. Right. And that is important. Right. I mean, temperature swings, all that. I got the APEX set for semi uh, techs, mm-hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so you got an APEX over at the store? Is that what you're doing? Or not you, yet, but okay, I, will, apex here. I will be got setting it. APEX up over there. Basically for the monitoring for yes. temperature, you know, yep. something gets out of whack, send me a text. Right, right. right. And the lesson from Sanjay? I would send you a text every every day at nine o'clock. <laughs> I I caught that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I had to call him up because I said my my phone's not getting any more texts from here. So somehow I got two clocks installed on this yes. Apex, and I don't know what happened. <laughs> but once you know, and I had to wait for them to get a hold of my computer and right. take care of. I had a list of stuff for him to do. Right. I'm not computer smart, so right. it's right. like get in there and you want to call back on off. And Right, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. To your point, the whole two clock thing, right? Yeah, yeah, right. two clocks. Um, right. I only saw one, but there's two clocks in there because I had it actually set up. I wanted my tanks to come on at 8 30, 9 mm-hmm. o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. That's when I'd like it to come on. Right. I actually uh, had the the apex, I think the last time was every time I have it come on early, I'd set it up so it's not working right. All right. my time zones were correct. I'd set it up. I was down to like 6 a.m. My mm-hmm. lights come on 12.45 in the afternoon. <laughs> That's when they come on. Right. You know? I, was, I, was, I was at 8.30. They were coming on at, at like 11, right. 11.45 right. or something like that. So I just, it just didn't work. Right. Again, technology at its finest. It's, right. That's it. Well, I'd like to thank Kevin for having us over to see his beautiful tanks. <laughs> Mike's cutting it. He's like, I'm listen, it hey, it's just, a penguins yeah, game, a penguins penguins game, game tonight. tonight. Our next video will be at Kevin's store, and you can see what he's doing <laughs> and how he's changed it. <laughs> and, and on that note, thank you, gentlemen, for the time. Oh, hold on, hold on. Before I forget, um, behind you, Refugium. Mm-hmm. You got your Kato. Your, your your Refugium. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. What kind of light is that? I never saw. That's a Mars aqua light. Okay. Yeah, Maybe I here can... in Mars where we live. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it has a nice red to yeah. it. You know, I did pick up the Kessel one, but I haven't tried it out. Sure. I'm probably going to set up a refugium for that system. Sure. So I'll do the Kessel one over there and see how it works. And for that, you could keep it on 24-7 like the Actually, method? Actually, no? it's the same with the GFO. I'm cutting it okay. out a lot now, too, because okay. of the fact that it's, it's, it's tank awesome. is just kicking Clean. real good on yeah. its own. The way it's set up, so it's got a nice 
nice sweet balance to it. Mm -hmm. I don't need this as much. Good deal. So. And, and now, Mike, you took, hold on, your big tank, right? You you don't have anything growing in that refugium, right? You no. just have a whole shitload of skimmers and... Yeah, and there's a carbon reactor yeah. and basically two skimmers and yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. I've got as simple as I can. Right. Because... The more complicated it is, the more stuff you have to do, and the more problems I've typically run into over right. time. Right. So I'm trying to look at this as long term. Do I want to be unscrewing this, and taking this apart? No. Right. So that worked 20 years ago. It worked 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't see why it won't work now. So that's what I've gone to. Water changes, simple and fast. Right. Cleaning a skimmer often, simple and fast. Not adding a bunch of crap, simple and fast. Right. And I know the people that like make all that stuff aren't going to be happy, but I've, so I've gone away from, I've added less and less stuff, and it seems to work better. Right. Well, you know, and it's funny because when you compare the recipes, like I had mentioned, you guys aren't that far off, right, as far as, and you're both successful as far as the tanks look awesome and everything else. All right, so it goes back to that new hobbyist. Again, what should you do? Simple and fast. Simple right? and fast. So then you'll do it. Right. Right.